always talk about how you cannot discredit what fans see what fans realize what fans pay attention to what fans bring up the conversations that we have you can't discredit that because fans while we're not in the nfl uh we are not stupid so while a lot of us were sitting at the end of the bar last night watching the ravens and steelers game uh we saw something that really stood out to us uh we saw that gus edwards was just not involved didn't see him like hardly ever and a lot of us were scratching our heads wondering why and i was like what's going on with gus what was happening but even though this has been a, a normal thing for the baltimore ravens not only with gus edwards but just with some of their best playmakers that they have on offense there'll be a lot of times when you just you won't hear from them consistently and it won't even be because the opposing team's defense is stopping them and taking them out the game. It'll be because the Baltimore Ravens are stopping themselves and taking their own guys out of the game. And, you know, there's that saying that hindsight is twenty twenty, And it is, but in this case, foresight was twenty twenty. The The current thing that we were looking at, it was twenty twenty because we saw it clear as day. So John Harbaugh. He had his uh, weekly post-game presser, um, and he had a couple of interesting things to say, um, but one of them was about Gus Edwards, and he was asked from Cordell, again, Cord Cordell be bringing, a, he be bringing the real questions, man. Shout out to him for not just asking the questions, but asking the questions. Shout out to Cordell Woodland. He said, um, he, he asked about, uh, why didn't we see a lot of Gus Edwards? And, and Harbaugh said that he wasn't happy about that. He said, Gus should have been out there more. And he said, there was no excuse for that. There was no excuse for that. It's crazy because oftentimes, especially with the offense, it seems like there's always an excuse for one thing or another. It really does. It seems like there's an excuse for why this offense is not working, why it's not functioning, why our players are not making plays. Why It just seems like there's always an excuse for something. Even though Harbaugh said there's no excuse. And then that would make you wonder, like, man, I know Harbaugh is the head coach. He is involved with literally everything that the Baltimore Ravens do. So why is that something that wasn't fixed or adjusted or addressed mid-game, during the game? Why do we have to, and this is week 17, it's week 17, why do we have to keep having these conversations after the games? Why not during? Like, what's, what's going on on that sideline every week to where these things aren't being addressed in the heat of the moment? It just, a lot of it doesn't make sense. But if you ask some people, they'll just say the, the folks that are sitting at the end of the bar, they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, but anyway, um, Harbaugh talked about how the Ravens' effort, it was an A+. Plus. And now, mind you, effort doesn't equal results. Effort just means that's, that's how hard you tried. So he said the Ravens, their, their trying was an A+. Plus, but he said we just didn't have the result. It's the NFL. It's a tough outcome. We have many opportunities in front of us. Our guys are tough and resilient. We're preparing for Cincy. Now, I guarantee that there's a lot of people out there who learn the word resilient from John Harbaugh. Because I feel like he uses it like every press conference, especially after a loss. Especially after a loss. Um, but anyway... Um, he was asked how closely he'll be watching tonight's game between the Bengals and the Bills. I didn't realize the game was in Cincy. <laughs> I, th I thought the game was in Buffalo. Ooh, that doesn't help the Ravens. But anyway, um, how closely will you be watching tonight's game? He said, I'll watch it as much as I can, then we'll get, on, we'll get it on uh, tape tomorrow. Um, and he was talking about the tape for the Bengals since the Ravens play them next week. And he was saying since they play, uh, they play tonight that they don't have anything to watch on them from this week to prepare for next week. Um, he was also asked about uh, if this game impacts the, who plays next week when they play uh, the Bengals. And he said uh, it's too early to tell, but at the same time that they may be playing for seeding. So it probably shouldn't impact it, but I think it definitely will. Because if the Bengals win tonight, the AFC North is theirs. They would have won the AFC North two years in a row. Two years in a row. Now, last year, okay, Ravens got hurt and whatnot. But this year, no, yeah, Lamar's out, so that's huge. But still, Ravens, even with Lamar, they have had so many opportunities. With Lamar in, they've had opportunities that they let slip. With Lamar out, they've had opportunities that they let slip. Ravens just, this year, they have just not been taking advantage of so many opportunities. Now, granted, they are in the playoffs. So they've been taking 
advantage of enough opportunities to get in. So that's great. But they could have been in, in, in a much better spot right now. But anyway, um, he was asked, uh, do you expect Lamar Jackson to practice? And he said, I don't know. I, I wait for what I hear today. And he said he'll listen to Lamar and he'll listen to the doctors and then he'll end up going from there. Uh, he did talk about how Morgan, Morgan Moses' injury wasn't significant and they didn't have any significant injuries, so that's a good thing. Um, he was asked, what did you make of the defensive struggles stopping the run? He said, I was disappointed. The guys were too. We're better than that. It wasn't any one thing. Okay. Now, um, somebody brought up how the last five games have been a struggle to score consistently. Is it as simple as injuries at quarterback and wide receiver, or, or is it something else? And he said that those are real challenges, but they aren't challenges that we can't overcome. Well, I mean, the Ravens haven't been able to overcome them because they haven't been scoring points. They haven't been scoring no points. The offense has been like it, it and it was struggling even when, when Lamar was still in. It was struggling. It wasn't struggling this bad, this consistently, but it was even struggling back then. But like right now, it's like at an all time low. So saying that, that those are challenges that you can't overcome, when are y'all gonna overcome them? What is it gonna happen? It's <laughs> like we, we waiting. We, we, we certainly waiting. But anyway, he's, he also said that they didn't make plays when they needed to make them. Said they couldn't get another field goal to seal the game. And he said they had chances to make the plays, but they couldn't get it done. Okay. Um, and now somebody else also asks, are, are we getting close to the point where we have to worry about Lamar not having enough uh, ramp up time before the playoffs, like with practice and playing and stuff? Uh, and Harbaugh said the offense won't change much from Lamar and Huntley. Our offense is built for Lamar and around Lamar. He said they play the same offense, but they play it slightly differently. We're going to prepare for Cincy. Yeah, then he just started taking a, the answer a whole other way. We're going to prepare for Cincy, whichever QB plays. We're going to expect them to play great football. Now that, mm, oh, I hate hearing that. I really hate hearing that because it's not true. Whenever you hear somebody say, oh, this offense was built for Lamar Jackson, it wasn't. It wasn't. You look at anything that he did in college. This offense was not it. This was not built for Lamar Jackson. This, this offense was built for the Baltimore Ravens. It was built for Greg Roman. It was built for their philosophy. It was not built for Lamar Jackson. But that's what they want to tell people. But anyway, um, he also said that we didn't do a good job of attacking the commitment they made to stopping the run um because that that right there was an indictment on greg roman because i mean they didn't like we all saw that we talked about it in the post game thoughts video we talked about it in the live stream last night during the game again it didn't take hindsight for that to be 2020 the the ravens they were so predictable and the ravens they made it easier for the steelers to play against them they, they made it so easy for them but anyway, Harbaugh said, we didn't do a good job of attacking the commitment that the Steelers made to stopping the run. Then on the flip side, he said, we didn't do a good job of stopping their commitment to running the ball. We didn't get the QB down, its scheme, and its execution. Yeah. And um, he was asked if he would like to see Lamar for at least a week before the postseason. He said, of course. Um, he did say that Calais and Marcus Peters both have a chance to play this week. Um, then he was asked about, uh, he said, your wide receivers had two catches for 18 yards. Did the Steelers do something to limit that groove? And, and for that part, it's kind of hard to hear what the, uh, the reporter was asking because, like, sometimes the volume can be very, very low um, on, from the reporter's side. And sometimes even from the people speaking on, on, like, the Ravens side, like the coaches and the players and stuff. But from the reporter, sometimes it can be really low. But anyway, that's just a sad thing. But, um... Yeah, so the, that reporter asked about, he brought up the wide receivers only having two catches for 18 yards. Um, and Harbaugh, and, and then that reporter asked if the Steelers did something to stop that. And he said, we, uh, and then he took a long pause. Like, this dude took, like, one of the longest pauses ever. It was super awkward silence. He's just sitting there, everybody just sitting there waiting. But he said, we, uh, not specifically. The, the pause was much longer than that, by the way. Go watch it for yourself. He said, I, I think the ball could have gone there to the receivers a, a few times, but it didn't. Mark Andrews got a lot of targets. It's not like we threw the ball a lot. Uh, there are times where it could have gone there to the receivers, and it didn't. Uh, not to say that it should have. That's just the way the game plays out sometimes. So that was it. Um, 
really like not much, but again, a lot of the same old stuff that we normally hear uh, every week. Um, with the whole Gus Edwards thing, uh, I, I just it makes you wonder if Harbaugh really has full control uh, over this team. And I ain't even talking about the players. I mean, just like with the coaches and stuff. Like we know Harbaugh lets his OC do their thing. He lets, excuse me, his DCs do their thing, and so on and so forth. But why why not step in? Why not step in and be like, hey, what, what, what's happening with Gus? Hey, what's happening with this guy? Hey, what's happening with that guy? Hey, what's going on with him? Well, hey, well, why is he not playing? Hey, why don't we get him more involved? He's hot. I, why not? It's just, I don't know. It's, it's like, what do you expect, man? And, and, and you know, I've been seeing more and more from people. I, I see people, people are like, a lot of, a lot of people are just fed up. A lot of people, I've been seeing more and more people just realize, like, they're getting the same runaround. They're getting the same runaround. And it's the same thing with the losses. Like, they, they get, and again, nobody expects you to be all happy. Go like, oh, man, we lost? <laughs> oh, well, that's too bad. We'll get them next time, buddy. Nobody expects you to be all chipper and like that, and that's fine. But it's like the lack of accountability and the lack of actually enforcing some type of change and i ain't out here saying oh fire him 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 but where's the accountability these i heard somebody talking about it earlier they said that these coaches they just walking around so comfortable and that's why nothing really changes much because the coaches are just so comfortable and it's hard to disagree with that it's really hard to disagree with that because i don't think there's anybody like, I mean, obviously, he got a playoff spot. He had a playoff spot with two games left. Everybody know Harbaugh ain't going nowhere. So he's obviously super, super comfortable. He ain't going nowhere. He's not getting fired this offseason. He ain't get, he not getting fired. If he did, I would be the most shocked person in the world. But Harbaugh ain't getting fired. For Giro, no, there's some back and forth on that. Some people feel like he could get fired. Some people feel like he could, his contract run out, and they'd be like, oh, okay, bye. Some people even feel like he could possibly be re-signed. Who knows? But... Whatever it is, G Giro's obviously comfortable too. Because in that Denver game, I mean, there have been other games even before the Denver game, but that Denver game, that was like, because that was with the whole, uh, when it was coming out that he could possibly go to Stanford and he was looking like he was next in line. It was looking like Giro was already on his way out and he wouldn't even, even have had to have been fired. But with all the stuff that <laughs> they were pulling in that game, it's like, what? And he, he stayed. He obviously didn't get the job at Stanford, and he, he stayed as Ravens offense. And then, like, who they play after that? Was it the Steelers after that? The Steelers game did fine. They, they ran the ball. But in the Falcons game, weird stuff. In the Browns game, oh, gosh, that was probably the worst. Then you see in this game, just it's like, what are we doing? What's going on? But Giro ain't got nothing to fear because he know ain't nothing happening. Ain't nothing happening to him. Nothing is going to go down. So it's like, I know it's been said, and it's true. Like when that pressure is on, that's when hardball coaches his best. When the pressure is on, well, that's normally when he coaches. When the pressure is on in regular season, that's when he coaches his best. Playoffs, a little different, but when the pressure is on in regular season, that's when he coaches his best. That's when, they, when Ravens' backs are against the wall, that's when you'll be seeing some stuff. It's like, oh, okay. But um, ain't no pressure. Ain't no pressure. So, we'll see, man. Uh, we'll see how the rest of the season goes. I mean, one, one game wow, one game left in the regular season, and that's it. That's a wrap. And then on to the playoffs. And then just got to hope for the best. I know so many Ravens fans are not expecting much of anything in the playoffs, and I can understand why. I get Ravens fans' frustrations. Uh, we all sitting at the end of the bar together. Um, but, I mean, it's just hoping for the best and seeing what happens. But, anyway, Team Keep It Clean, appreciate y'all. I love y'all, and we out.